Hey, Viking fans, this is Keith Millard, and you are listening to The One Bar and Lupicus Show. Go Vikes! All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepagus show. I am One Bar, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about five guys, five players that could just fall in the Vikings' lap. And when I say fall, I mean they have no reason being there, but it's there's a chance. And I am Lepagus, and yes, there's a possibility, so we might as well talk about it. Um, you know, it happens every year. Players slide down the board. I mean, remember when the Vikings got Sharif Floyd? He was supposed to go like in the top four. We got him. It was like 18, 19, way down the board. No one saw that. I, I wish he, I wish he would have went in the top four. Well, it wasn't his fault. He got he had male practice in his career. Still, um, I wish he would have But yeah, players fall at the time. Randy Moss fell to the Vikings way back when. Uh, it happens. So we might as well talk about some players that maybe just the way the draft unfolds, teams targeting certain positions cause these guys to tumble down the board a bit. Yeah, and let me uh, let me let me piggyback on you and uh, and and help. Um, what am I trying to say? No idea. Let me help solidify this point because you can look at the positions. We're picking fourteen. There's a there is a realistic chance at five quarterbacks, three wide receivers, two cornerbacks, a tight end, a linebacker, two offensive line are going to go. So if you go strictly by that, that alone is going to have some of these guys fall. And that doesn't even include the crazy ass weird picks that we see every year. Also, just randomly throw it all out of whack, like a like a Colin Farrell and C.J. Henderson. So uh, it's going to happen. One of these guys will be there. Yeah, we'll see. And hopefully, it's one the Vikings would actually take. Uh, so let's just hop into this right now. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and start with the wide receiver, Jalen Waddle, my favorite wide receiver in this draft. Um, you know, the way this happens, I think it all, it, it, it depends on the Detroit Lions at pick seven. If they opt to go with a the quarterback, then you got Waddle and you probably have Devontae Smith there. So there's two options. Um, and who's the next team that really needs a wide receiver is the Philadelphia Eagles picking at 12. If they go Smith and all of a sudden Jalen Waddle could be there for the Vikings at 14. Yeah. Not only that, not only that, but, um, it's very rare. You see three wide receivers go in the top 14 picks. It's happened two times in the last 10 years and 2017 was the last time it happened. You, if you can name these three receivers, I'll give you a shirtless chest bump. 2017, 2017, the last time three wide receivers were taken in the first 14 picks. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to give you like four seconds, five, four, three, two, one. I'll give you five. Falcons. I wish Corey Davis, John Ross, and Mike Williams. Ugh. All gone in the top 14. So it does not happen very often. It's not so much because Jalen Waddle isn't deserving, but it's like you said, other positions creep up. And also Jalen Waddle, he's he's my second favorite one. I mean, Chase is my, my first one, but it's it's actually pretty close. Waddle, I mean, he's teams might get scared off by his size. I don't know. I mean well, the ankle, I think, is gonna be the thing. If they're not comfortable with how his ankle healed, uh, afraid he's lost a step, lost his burst, that's gonna be the thing that could send him down to the board. And man. Number three option for the Vikings for a year or two and then takes over as the number two role. Return man. I mean, this guy's got a gear. Just when he turns it on, no one's catching him. He's so explosive. I'd love to see this guy in this offense. So, uh, yeah, if he falls to 14, he's my home run slam dunk pick. Don't even think about it. Yeah, the the other reason a, he, a guy like him could fall is just the thickness. I said thickness of the wide receiver crew when it comes around two, three, and four. There's a lot of guys with his size and his wiggle. Well, yeah, they're not Jalen Waddle, but could fill that role. Yeah, so we'll see what happens there. Who you got next? Who you, who else do you think could maybe fall? Uh, let's go with let's go with quarterback. Let's go with Trey Lance. Um, Trey Lance, he's he's the big quarterbacks when it comes to him and Mac Jones seem to be the big mystery as far as when the hell they're going to go. Um, the, the reason Trey Lance I think could fall is just this is pretty easy for me is just he's probably the furthest away from seeing the field. Um, level of competition had the year off. Yeah, he had one game. Uh, he ran up and even at his level of competition, he ran a pretty simple offense. And uh, he's just he's got the longest way to go. And you look at a team like the Broncos, who could maybe take him. What's they're not going to be able to play him day one, they don't have somebody to mentor him. Drew Locke isn't going to mentor this guy. So, Trey Lance, I think, is uh, if he do, if he makes it past like pick what maybe the Lions, I think there's a real good shot. Yeah, I think a couple things have to happen, too. I think the, the Falcons have to surprise and stay where they are and not go quarterback, whether that's a Kyle Pitts or a corner or something crazy. That has to happen. Lions have to pass. Um, then you, you mentioned you got to get past Denver. Um, but if he does and a team doesn't come up and swoop up there, 
Trey Lance could sit there at 14. If you were the Vikings and that situation was there, would you pull the trigger on Trey Lance? I would call every single team behind me to see if they would trade up. And uh, if not, I guess I'd flip a coin. I could go either way. And, and, and me sitting there saying his level of competition, all that stuff, Trey Lance is fantastic. I love Trey Lance. I just think he's got the longest way to go. And a team like the Vikings where we got Kirk Cousins, where he has no pressure, he's going to come here and sit down and be a perfect, perfect place for him. So if they drafted him, I'd probably slam a beer with excitement and then just wonder who the hell is going to play guard still. Yeah, I, I'd you know I'd be all bored. I'd be on board with it if it were to me. Uh, I really do feel like this pick needs to have some kind of impact this year. Um, but again, Mike Zimmer, late. You got to think he's late in his tenure with the club. Uh, will he be there beyond this year if they lose? Can he risk taking a quarterback? Again, he's not the one ultimately making the choice. Rick Spielman's been at every single one of these big quarterback pro days, watching closely. Um, man, it would be hard for them to pass. I think a Trey Lance was there at fourteen. Maybe watching a little too closely. A little creepy yeah. it was a little creepy sitting there well the, the 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 cards are against them as far as falling to pick 14 but you never know yeah all right let's go for one here realistic option i think a lot of vikings fans are going to be hoping for uh rashawn slater can he get to 14 um you know chances looked a little bit better last week before the carolina panthers traded to get sam darnold taking away their need for a quarterback now you're looking at the panthers um you know, corner or O-line is probably the way they're going to go. Uh, if they do go corner, then the, then if you if you really want Slater to get to the Vikings, you still got to work with the Cowboys. I think they're, they're kind of a, a wild card to take a, a tackle like Rashawn Slater. Then you got the Chargers sitting right in front of you. That's the biggest scary thing there. Uh, why would they not take a guy like Rashawn Slater if he's there? So uh, a lot of crazy picks would have to happen to make this realistic up an option or it to actually happen. Um, but it is possible. Well, we're talking Rashawn Slater. We might as well just lump in our next one with this because yeah. it's going to be kind of the same argument. And that's Penny Sewell, where out of all these, he's probably, this is probably the biggest pipe dream at pick 14, although Slater's not far behind him. And this is just basically teams would be have to take in other positions. I mean, passing on offensive linemen, because like, like Jalen Waddle, there's, there's still some pretty damn good offensive linemen after you get past round one that they might have their eyes on. Um, and the Chargers just seem to always take weird picks. So that one wouldn't surprise me a ton. And then you got to throw in guys like Tevin Jenkins, Sam Cosme, while it would not say they're going to go before Sewell, but that could throw a wrench in with Slater, Elijah Vera Tucker. I just think all these offensive linemen are a lot closer ranked than uh, than we think. Yeah, a couple of things here. I think we'd have to go back and just say, too, this year, I mentioned it before, but these teams might have very, very different grades on players, you know, a lot of these guys didn't play last year, so you're kind of projecting them from, you know, two years ago, how they played then. Uh, so a lot can change. So these teams might have very, very different rankings on players, which we may see some of these guys fall. But to me, the Sewell scuttlebutt lately that he's going to fall to 14, that he's fallen down the board, to me seems like teams who want him uh, starting those rumors, starting that fire, hoping he'll slide on the board to them. But I, I don't see it happening. I think he's going to go in the top six picks, pretty much a guarantee there. Um, yeah, I mean, with, with Sewell, the, the big thing is, you know, everybody loves an athletic offensive tackle. Sewell is not as athletic as some of these other guys, but uh, that, that's, that seems to be his only knock, and it's not even really a knock. No, I mean, to me, he seems like a surefire, just a, a no-brainer pick to me. And I, I just think you hear it every year when the, the big guy close to the draft, oh, he's falling down the board, and then the draft rolls around, and they're picked exactly where they thought they were going to be or a little bit higher. So, Well, remember when Jaywan Taylor went in round two? Yeah, he's, he's probably the one exception to this. <laughs> There's hope. Yeah, there is hope. There is hope. Uh, again, of the two, I think Slater's got the better chance. Um, but we'll see what happens. I, I don't think either one's real high. I don't know. I think the Cowboys and Giants and uh, maybe even the Chargers are just going to make some real turd picks. I think we're going to have so. some really happy moments when they're on the clock. It's just, just a hunch. There's going to be one, but you, you see the the normal – I mean, the Eagles, uh, they're the team I'm hoping for really does something stupid. Um, but there's some players that you've, you've heard rumors that could go higher than you expect. Zayvon Collins is one, that linebacker. Uh, the Joker, I mean, he's a guy who could sneak up there higher than people are expecting. So if one of these teams falls in love with a guy like that, that could be enough to push someone like this down the board. So let's go to our last one. It's the cornerback. Uh, again, in play now. I still think it's a reach at 14 if they go this row. But, man, if Patrick Sertain is sitting there, he falls to 14. First of all, how would it happen? And would the Vikings go for it? 
Well, how would it happen, I think, is is what I mentioned right off the bat, is if five quarterbacks do go, if the receivers do go, go off the board, if there is a run on offensive linemen, I mean, Sertan could actually be the first defensive player off the board. So uh, a big run on offense, um, teams trading up, um, like like same thing with the offensive line. Another way that this these could happen are just other teams back there trying to get up and get some of those edge rushers that push a Sertan or push a offensive lineman down. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think he, he can go as high as four. Wouldn't be surprised if he went that high to the Falcons. Um, and you got teams like the Cowboy, or Cowboys who are definitely looking at corner. The, the Panthers going different routes. The Panthers go the old linemen. Uh, maybe the, the Cowboys do the same where they take a linebacker or they take J.C. Horn, another highly touted cornerback. Um, but the Vikings are sitting there, and let's say Derrissaw's gone, Slater's gone, Sewell's gone, no quarterbacks, no receivers, and really your best bet, your best player is Patrick Sertan. How much are you going to get from this year? I'm not sure, but he's the best player on the board, and you make that pick every time. Yeah. Our cornerback room is going to be pretty depleted after this year. A lot of uh, a lot of question marks there. So Patrick Sertan, any one of these guys would be a shocker if he's there, but any one of these guys would – I'd be all for being the pick if the Vikings are on the board. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're players that shouldn't make it that far down the board. So One of them's going to uh, – When they do gonna. get there – you got to pull the trigger. You got to shoot. You got to take them. Don't overthink it. Don't get too damn cute. Don't stick to your guns. Um, don't pull a Jeff Carson. Best player available. You got to do it. You got to do it. All right. That's it. Those are five guys who could fall to pick 14 on draft day. Again, we are just, we're getting close. We're almost two weeks away. We're, we're really, really approaching. It's coming fast. Uh, and I'm like, I can't wait. I can't wait. Fair time of the year. Absolutely fair time of the year. Uh, so we're waiting for the draft. Wait and think about this. Killing a panda in China is punishable by death. Good.